Good afternoon, everyone. Thanks for tuning in to another episode of Tokyo Yo. My name is T. Discussion time. I haven't done one of these for a little bit, so I thought it was time. There's something that was kind of gnawing at the edge of my mind for a little bit, so I thought I'd talk about it today. The topic of our discussion today is going to be monometals versus bimetals. And by extension, bimetals, are they even worth it? Buckle up. So I guess let's kind of start by talking about what I mean by each of those things, monometals and bimetals. So a monometal obviously means one metal, and that is a yo-yo that is made out of one metal material. Usually yo-yos are made out of 6061, which is a cheap but easy to manufacture aluminum, which offers, you know, typical level of durability. So if it gets smashed on something, it's not gonna break immediately. There are other materials. There's 7068, I believe, and 7075, which are both very popular types. Although 7075 is more expensive, but it allows you to make different shapes of yo-yos. And there are other types of metal too. There's your, there's some yo-yos that are made of steel, which is really heavy. There's other ones I believe are made out of like magnesium, even yo-yos made out of titanium. But for the sake of this argument, mono metal usually means 6061 basic one type of metal yo-yo. Then you have your bimetals and your bimetals are usually, well, obviously, made out of two metals, bi meaning two, right? So you've got your typically 6061 aluminum and then something on the edge or something on the rim, another strip of metal or maybe a piece of metal that's either been fastened on by glue or by welding or it's actually a piece of the actual body of the yo-yo. But in any case, the yo-yo is made of two separate metals. And of course, you're going to get into your tri-metals, which are, you know, three different materials, or you might have bimetals that have metal in different areas of the yo-yo. But now let's talk about the differences between them. Why would someone want a bimetal yo-yo? Well, the theory behind bimetal yo-yo design is that you're able to compensate for the shape of the yo-yo by adding weight into a certain part of the design. So if you want the yo-yo to be a certain shape, then you can kind of use usually stainless steel is what they use because it's got a pretty heavy weight you're typically going to strap that stainless steel on to some part of the yo-yo in order to move the weight around so for example if you want a v-shaped yo-yo that you want for competition you want to spin for a really long time well if you want a long spin you need to have a lot of weight on the rims that's how physics works you put weight out on the rims of something it's going to add a little bit more stability and it's going to spin longer in yo-yo terms so you would want to put some more weight on the rims well how do you do that you want to put stainless steel on the rim stainless steel is more heavy than 6061 you put stainless steel out there on the rim there you go you got two metals what other effects does it have besides the obvious functionality benefit well they look pretty cool if you've got stainless steel it looks pretty nice it's usually brushed or polished it looks really chrome kind of shiny it gives it kind of a bling factor Nowadays, you're seeing a lot of companies anodizing the stainless steel, so you've got even more different types of design elements, and you've got a lot of different aesthetic choices as well. You can make it really shiny, you can make gold-looking rims, or you can stain them blue. Uh, you can anodize stainless steel in all sorts of different ways. So we've got two things so far. It improves functionality, allegedly, and it lets you add kind of a bling factor. What else can it do for you? Well, it also has the added benefit of giving you something that you can sell for more money. So anytime the design process for something or the manufacturing process for something is more, uh, has added complexity, you're able to charge more for that thing. So technically, so usually a lot of bimetals end up being more expensive. And so here we're gonna start getting into our monometal versus bimetal discussion. So anytime you're manufacturing something that is a little bit more complex to make or the design process is a little bit more complex or the manufacturing process is more difficult, you're able to add a higher price to it, which is gonna increase your profit margin, obviously. You've also got the prestige factor. You've got something that looks really nice, really fancy, and you get to talk about how difficult it was to design and manufacture or how there's only 30 in the world because it was a particularly tricky design or something. So there's the prestige factor as well. It's time to get down to brass tacks. Are bimetals that much better? Are they really worth it? And that's where the rub comes in, doesn't it? Are they actually worth it? All right, well here, I'm gonna give you my personal opinion on it. Are bimetals worth it? Now for people like your Brandon Vu's, your Dylan Kowalski's, people who bust out these really, really long combos or people who compete on a regular basis, sure, the spin time and the stability that the bimetal allegedly provides is good for them, that's what they need. But at the same time, you also don't see people like Gentry Stein using bimetals to win you know, contests. He won with the plastic. Now then you have Evan Nagao, who created a bimetal, The Edge, which he used to win nationals very recently. 
Now that's a perfect example of he needed to design a yo-yo that he needed. Like that is a perfect example of a signature yo-yo because that bimetal design, that wide design is exactly what he needed. And I actually really like the edge. I could not take it to nationals. I'm not that good. And I don't think a lot of people are. He took advantage of it perfectly to its utmost potential. And obviously that's what a signature model is supposed to do, right? Is let the player create something that plays to their fullest potential. But at the same time, for a lot of people, bimetals are not going to do that. That's not really the case, obviously, right? The yo-yo is still only as good as the player is. So a lot of times what you have happening is these yo-yos getting really, really, really hyped up. People may spend a lot, a lot, a lot of money on yo-yos that are not going to help them the way that they expected. Now, I'm not saying that yo-yo companies are lying or that the yo-yos are not good. The thing is, is that most people can't take full can't take full advantage of the potential that those bimetals provide. Then you move on to the price. As I mentioned, they are more expensive, so that's another factor. A lot of like your really, really high prestige, high quality bimetals are over $100. My first bimetal, the Edge, was I think 120 or 30 USD. Now I love that yo-yo, and I'm not saying I would pay that much for it, or that someone shouldn't pay that much for it. But you know, bimetals are getting out of the toy sphere and into like the nice thing for adults to buy tier. I think also people may look at that and they may perceive there's some kind of quality leap that you go from like a $60 mono metal to a $150 buy, buy metal and suddenly like, oh, the yo-yo must be so, so, so much better. My skills are going to be three times as good because I'm paying three times as much. And of course, again, that's not going to be the case because it still depends on the player's skill and not the tool that they're using. But that's the same with any product. Anytime you look at something that is really, really expensive or something that, you know, costs more than its counterparts, people always look and say, well, why is that one cheaper? I want to get the more expensive one because you get what you pay for, right? Like, why are these yo-yos being released? Is it actually a yo-yo that needs to be released or does this company just need to have a bimetal in the rotation because everybody else does? And so it kind of became this thing of like the companies all releasing bimetals back and forth, I think just to compete with each other's bimetals. And now you're kind of seeing that draw back. You're seeing that like kind of recede a little bit where a lot of companies aren't being so eager to release as many bimetals and we're starting to focus on the more like budget or not budget, but kind of like affordable line again. And I think that's where we should be. You know, you can still have your prestigious, super nice bimetals, but it's nice to have like the budget area being focused on again. And then you have some yo-yos like the Veritas Pro that released with 7075 rings on the side. I don't know if that's a bimetal, if you classify that as bimetal, whatever. But there are some yo-yos that need these kind of extra design elements to function better. And so I think when you have that case where you say, well, this yo-yo could not exist without some kind of design element like stainless steel rings, I think that's different than just releasing a bimetal because you need to have one on your website. Does that make sense? And then you have another sector of people who just hate bimetals. You have a lot of people who say, well, that's just silly. You don't need to have this whole other design element. You just need to have a really good machine shop and a really good designer and a good engineer. And they could do the same thing with less metal, with less cost. To them seeing these kind of yo-yos come out with all these extra design elements like, oh, we've got three rings. To people who feel like mono metals are the way to go, that must seem like a really silly design choice. Like, so those are kind of all the elements I think. I talked more about bimetals than I did mono metals there. So where do I stand, I guess? You might be wondering, or you're probably not wondering because my opinion doesn't matter. Well, for my money, I like them both. Oh, that was a really lazy and anticlimactic answer, wasn't it? But seriously, there's nothing wrong with either of them. You've got mono metals are really good because they're lower cost. I'm not as afraid to take them out and play with them because if they get dinged or something, I'm not going to care that much because it's not going to dislodge the ring or anything like that. That's another thing that happens with bimetals. You knock them against something and sometimes the rings fall out. Then it's unusable. At best, it's got vibey and at worst, it's unusable. But back to mono metals, you know, you have something low cost. You're not afraid to damage it. And, you know, it's a very solid, whole feeling construction. And monometals are really dang good these days. I, I just did a video about the Duncan MKT the other day. That thing's awesome. That's a monometal. I think that's 7075, but whatever. Like, that's a really good monometal. Top deck, another 7075 yo-yo. Everybody loves that thing. The Windrunner, that's another Duncan. That thing is totally great. It's 40 bucks. You've got your shutter, your horizon, 50, 60 dollars. Checkpoints, one of my favorite old yo-yos. That's like 50, 60. That's a monometal. There are tons and tons and tons of great monometals, but at the same time, like I said, I'm in the middle. I like bimetals too. 
They're really fun because they're lighter. Because as I said, it lets you throw the weight around. You got those steel rings on there that lets you kind of push the weight into different ways, lets you make the yo-yo lighter, which is really fun. And then when you have a yo-yo like the Duncan Grasshopper X, which has a 7075 body, which lets you play with weight, and then the stainless steel rims as well, which lets you play with the weight even more, you get a yo-yo with like a really unique feel that's super light on top of that. So I think if you look at bimetals as a way to kind of experiment and play with weight and throw different design elements into the mix, I think it can be really nice. But if you're just making a bimetal to take advantage of the hype and try to sell a $100 plus yo-yo just because you can, I think that's kind of messed up. Does that make sense that I ramble too much? In conclusion, I have a few bimetals myself. And when I look at something and it says bimetal construction, I do raise my eyebrows a little bit because it's always fun and kind of kooky to play with stuff like that. And if a bimetal is done well, it does feel very different. The Grasshopper X is a good example. The Edge is a good example. But I think it's always fun because you, you do have that element of like, ooh, this one's a little bit special. So it's kind of fun to play with that kind of yo-yo. So I have nothing against bimetals personally. I know some people do, and that's totally fine. We can all be in this hobby together and enjoy it together, and we don't have to fight about it. Anyway, thanks for paying attention to this. I hope you hung on long enough to care about my incoherent ramblings. Sorry I go on for such a long time. If you guys have any suggestions for things you'd like me to discuss or talk about, leave it in the comments, I guess. I'll do these as often as I can. I don't really have a lot of time to do them, but I'll do my best. Anyway, boys and girls, thanks for listening. Take care. Have a nice day. And sayo yonara.